I did not want to do another series. I, I'm a theater person. I mean, that's how I started, and it's where I'm most comfortable is in a ratty old dressing room in a dusty theater somewhere, um, working with words, you know, and television is not about words, really. Um, it isn't that there isn't great writing. There is on, on television, but um, but that's not... That's not what you come away with when you're w watching a TV show. You, you come away with visual. Um, um, so um, when they when Robert Holmey offered me Nurse, I said, "Oh, I I don't think so." And um, I thought, you know, once again, I'll be holding people's hands and looking, looking sympathetic and compassionate and blah blah blah. And he said, no, no, this is going to be really gritty, like like ho the movie Hospital was with George C. Scott. And I said, okay, um, then make me an offer I can't refuse. And so he did. And basically the offer was that it would shoot in New York, which is where I lived at the time and where I wanted to stay. And um, um, it was um, tough because we were shooting in a hospital. So there were no movable walls, so the lighting very often took a long time for the poor DP to try to figure out how to light light a scene. And um, we all were in, in a little hospital room. So those were our dressing rooms with very little, you know, a couch and a coffee table and cockroaches. And, um, you know, a guest star would come on, like Steve Allen would come on and he'd be changing in the bathroom and I found because it was my show I found that mortifying I found it very very difficult um, I, I, I felt responsible maybe much too much so and um, so Robert Reed uh, who was my co-star uh, decorated his room because he's very good at that and I'm not and um, so there were there were those kinds of new series struggles Robert Holmey had never he, he was a, a, a great guy, but he had never produced a series before. So basically he would say, you're on your own here. And the scripts were coming from L.A., so um, I felt they weren't really writing about urban New York. They were writing, you know, she goes home and soaks in her hot tub. Well, you don't have a hot tub in an apartment in Harlem in New York. And so that was challenging and Robert and I would often be sitting rewriting a scene just before we were going to shoot it and um, there was a lot of misunderstanding going back and forth but I think it was basically a really good show and um, I it was doing well in the ratings and I thought it would would go on um, but I was so exhausted though that I I, I wasn't sure, because we would talk about shooting. We were shooting in the cold. We were shooting long hours, partly my fault because I had demanded a Monday. A part of my offer that I couldn't refuse was to have Mondays off because um, I just didn't want to get as tired as I was. Um, and um, I'm a very strong person, but for some reason, those long hours just wear me down. And so I think that sort of put pressure on the show. This is all in retrospect, of course, that put pressure on everybody to try to get in as much as they could uh, in four days. And um, I don't think that went over too well out here in L.A. Uh, with CBS, and I understand now why. I didn't at the time. And um, I desperately wanted New York writers. And Robert Holmey said, if you want New York writers, you're going to have to walk off the set. And I said, I've never walked off a set in my life. And he said, but that's what you're going to have to do if you want to get writers. And I went to Alan Wagner, who was the head of CBS in New York, and I said, I need help here. And he said, I'm with you. And he held up one of the scripts and said, this is not New York. And um, actually, he wasn't that kind. Um, and um, so... So I walked off the set, and um, that didn't go over well either here. And um, But I thought the stories that we did were good, and we did eventually get New York writers who knew how to write about New York, because New York is a character in its own. And to be working in a metropolitan hospital in New York, that's all part of the, the whole deal. And what was coming were, were, were stories that were more more kind of daytime stories, I felt, than what I had signed on for. 
So there was always that conflict going, and, and it's too bad because um, some of the stuff was really, was good. I did win an Emmy, and it was it was tough because we were um, we were coming. I had to get on a plane, and I think I still had my hair in curlers because I I can't remember why it was so. I don't know whether I'd been shooting something or something, but I didn't think I was going to make the plane. I finally did. I think my hair was still in curlers. I was dressed because I knew I had to go straight from the the airport to to the Emmys and um, I was sort of putting makeup on in the car and uh, the limo picked us up a limo picked us up and um, we had dog beds sort of sticking out of the trunk and my, my then husband was going to go home he wasn't coming with me and um, I, I did not expect to win the show had been canceled which was sort of a shock and a relief both at the same time because I was again the word tired seems to be coming up a lot in this, but um, I was. And so I remember Ed Asner was sort of sitting in the front row, and when they called my name and I went up to say thank you, um, I looked down at Ed, and he, he knew the show had been canceled, and he was looking at me with such compassion. That's the only word I can use. And he had such kindness and compassion on his face. And um, I'm really sorry I didn't handle things better back then. I didn't know how. And um, I, I think it's a shame the show was canceled. I think it could have really been a very good show. And it should have gone on. It was doing well in the ratings. And uh, I think it was canceled because I, I made people, I upset people. And uh, I would do it differently today. I would have flown back to LA. I would have talked to people at one to one and I would have handled it completely differently today. In retrospect.